Hello, hello, this is Aubrey with Easy School Marketing. I'm excited you're here with me today. We're gonna talk about four reasons schools fail to get things done, okay? Or fail to get the work done, right? All right, so I'm gonna dive right in because I see a lot of this happening right now when we're overwhelmed and overworked, okay? So, why are you not getting it done, okay? If you're a school leader, my guess is there are many fires that happen throughout the day. Children getting sick, you're being called into an unexpected meeting, there's angry parent on line one, okay? Lots of fires happen in schools. And what is a, typically a go-to reaction is to put out the fires at the expense of the important tasks that we're trying to do, okay? So what happens is we take care of the urgent, and we drop the important. And I'm sure you heard this in many different forms. There are several books on this, but when you drop the, the important task, what happens is your goals become further and further out of reach. You will not accomplish those important tasks because you're constantly attending to the urgent. So there's many ways to overcome this, but first becoming aware that you do this is key. How I see this play out, let's say, um, and this is avoidable. Let's say there's a head of school and there was an angry parent on line one and that then that ends up like they clear their whole schedule and the angry parent is now getting a meeting the same day and stuff like that. Now, yes, sometimes this needs to happen, but sometimes it actually doesn't need to be the head of school who does everything or it doesn't have to happen the same day. Listening is good and scheduling a time when people have cooled off is great too. But what happens is if we just throw everything out the window with the fires that are happening, we're not going to be able to do what we need to do to actually move forward in our marketing, our development, our admissions, all of it. Number two, you have an open door policy and no boundaries, okay? So a lot of times I hear people say, just stop in anytime, or they leave their office door open all day, or they don't have an office and <laughs> they're in cubicles or you know open office situations, and they just let their coworkers interrupt them left and right. Okay, what does this do? Well, it interrupts your flow and it takes you away from the task at hand. So if you set boundaries and say, hey, from one to three, I'm not answering email, and I'm working on this project and I'm putting on headphones and I'm just knocking it out. Please don't disturb me during one to three. Okay, and you are consistent with this and you don't actually let people disturb you during that time. You will be setting your boundaries and you will get more done. Okay, it's simple as that. Um, I often work with heads of school where we allocate times of their calendar that are set every week that are set to work on fundraising and relationship building or retention efforts, right? And those are non-negotiable times, meaning meetings can't be over -schedule, scheduled over them. If a staff member comes in and needs to talk, that is not the time the staff member can do that because what they're doing is holding that, that space available so they can move these projects forward so they are not tearing their hair out later <laughs> when they're trying to raise $30,000 in one day because they didn't consistently make the major donor <laughs> connections prior to an annual fund launching. Okay, school leaders not setting examples, leading by example, okay? So school leaders, people are watching you. They are definitely watching you. If you are a manager of people or just a person who is seen in the community, um, people are watching you, right? And they are looking to you to set the tone. What is acceptable, what's not? So if you work around the clock and let's say burn yourself out, then you are setting the example that that is what you expect of your staff. So whether you say, oh, it's okay, don't answer the emails on the weekend, yet you're the one answering emails on the weekend, you are not setting the example and you're not living by what you are expecting of the staff. And the staff will naturally move to what your example is. This could be admitting when something is not working. <laughs> We need to, as leaders, there's gonna be a time when something doesn't work, when you make a mistake and something doesn't work. Do you admit that mistake and say, hey, this was a mistake, how can we make it better? I, I thought this was gonna work, it didn't, okay, moving forward, right? But if you're not one to admit your mistakes, then what are you, what sort of example are you sending for your staff? So these are huge. Oh, not, <laughs> I see this a lot. So setting the example that things can't go out until they're absolutely perfect. They need to be proofread like 65 times. And like, if it's the website is 100% perfect, then it can't launch. Stuff like that holds up the whole team. And it sets expectation that we better get it perfect and perfect and right and before anything moves out of this office. And that 
is not sustainable, especially for small schools trying to do many different things, okay? Yeah, people are watching you and this is important. I mean, I don't think enough people realize that when you, for example, are late to meetings, then you're setting the example that it's okay to be late to meetings, right? So it's really thinking hard about how you're presenting yourself and what sort of examples you're setting. Okay, and number four. So I see this all the time. <laughs> it kills me. It's like, I can do it best, so I'm gonna do it myself. Even if I'm overworked and um, overwhelmed and this thing actually will not get done because guess what? I'm not willing to delegate or outsource it okay then we have a problem and that's when things don't get over huh? uh, oh, that's when things don't get done and that's when the person who says i'll do it myself i do it best they start feeling guilty like it's just a cycle of just uh, you know awful productivity and not getting things done so you need to stop with I'll do it myself, I do it best and consider delegating and outsourcing because those are going to become your best friends. So, that was my sum up of four reasons why schools are failing to get things done because these four th reasons take out 99% of why things aren't getting done. I hope this was helpful. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Aubrey at easyschoolmarketing.com. Thanks.